CO2 is a wonderful gas. The levels in our blood regulating how quickly and how deeply we breathe and how easily we can get oxygen into our cells. It's a simple gas. Too little CO2 and our patient stops breathing. Too much CO2 and our patient stops breathing. Using a capnograph to measure end tidal CO2, I am going to show the significance of dead space for a patient and specifically very small patients. The smaller the patient, the more critical the addition of mechanical dead space to the patient becomes. It is very easy to add dead space to a patient circuit when we don't trim our ET tubes to the mouth, attach capnographs or filters or heat moisture exchangers. Let's look at the effect of adding 10 to 15 percent mechanical dead space to a patient. Snorkels are the length they are for a reason. Make them longer and the harder it is for the diver to breathe not because of airway resistance, but because of the potential for inspired CO2. Note the white inspired CO2 figure zero in the top right hand corner of the monitor above the respiration rate in blue. Now let's increase my dead space to 100% of my tidal volume. This is equivalent to attaching a standard CO2 airway adapter to a two to three kilogram cat or rabbit. I'm going to breathe down one limb of a standard breathing circuit to simulate this. Note how quickly I start showing inspired CO2. Within a couple of breaths, I have an inspired CO2 of 6 plus. In anaesthesia, we could mitigate this by turning up the fresh gas flow a little. Not too much, because we don't want to cause problems by increasing airway resistance to the patient with the increased fresh gas flow on the inspiratory limb. Let's now increase the dead space to 200% of my tidal volume, or the equivalent of an untrimmed ET tube a connector and a capnograph connector to a small patient and let's see what happens. After just five breaths the inspired CO2 is at 12 before starting to climb uncontrollably into the 20s. I halted the experiment at this stage because I'm already feeling discomfort. I can taste the CO2, my chest is feeling tighter and I'm struggling to control my breathing rate. Consider how a small unconscious patient would feel. In conclusion, the smaller the patient the more critical excess dead space becomes if we want our smaller patients to wake up undamaged after surgery and anaesthesia.